the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Well, good morning. God bless you all. I hope you're having a great, had a great week. And it, it is this time now, just get into the Word of God. And uh, the, the hour has moved up, spring forward. I'm going to start back. I'm going to start back at 8 o'clock time, uh, or around 8 o'clock, 8-ish. Amen. Uh, I just want to sit there and say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> and, the, and the thing is to continue to uh, trust in God. Trusting him to do that with the acceptable in his sight and understand because what we're going to talk about today is being accountable to him. You know, I, I sit there and I looked at the uh, the reactions uh, of, 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 of the history of ministries. And I call it, quote, with the quote of the ministry is the church itself, the church of Jesus Christ. Let me get my tie and all that stuff squared away. But the church of, of Yeshua uh, and the doctrine that he taught and the doubt doctrine that he uses us to teach being led by the Holy Spirit is totally different from some of the ministries that we see out there that do things that are not acceptable in the eyes of God. It's not acceptable uh, for the will of God. And we need to understand and, and you know, from the uh, crusade to the Spanish Inquisition to the uh, slave trade to the Jim Crow laws to to even to modern day that <clears throat> some ministries have endorsed uh, bad behavior. You know, because when we think about the the whole purpose of the fivefold ministry gifts is to equip the saints, you, <clears throat> a believer, to do the work of the ministry. And, and I think if the, if the body of Christ has done and, and if the people that equip one another, equip ourselves to actually focus on living and preaching the gospel through your life. You gotta remember people look more at what you do than what you say. And you know, the, the one the scripture is gonna choose here today is the fact is that a tree is known by his fruit. His behavior uh, is what you're known by, your actions. You know, even scripture said, faith without works is dead. So you can, you know, you're gonna say, I have faith, but I have no works behind it. If you're gonna say, I'm a believer in, in Jesus, I'm a believer in Yeshua, then you should show fruit to say that you are a believer and a follower of Christ. You know, the scripture said in John 13, 34, he said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And 35 said, and men will know that you are my disciples for the love that you show one another. And if that's the case, and, and, and we sit there and use politics, race or color of skin, because remember one race, human race, color of skin, uh, different ethnic groups, ethnic groups that different uh, differences in ourselves, whether it's talking about speaking English or speaking Latino or, or speaking uh, Hebrew or, or Latin or any of those languages and use those as divide, then, and I mean divide is, is, is you fit in this category, you fill in this bucket, you fill in this bucket. Because you feel fit into these buckets, you, you have a different behavior toward your fellow man, especially toward your brother in Christ. See, what well, maybe you didn't get a clue, but see, there's a Democrat are believers in Christ, not because of their political affiliation, not because of the policies that you think, well, they doing abortion. Well, you're doing a mass murder. If you sit there and do, you get you got to sit there and you you advocate the Second Amendment, but you got people being killed people going to the school and killing people with these weapons of mass destruction. And you, you endorse that. You don't say anything about it. You say, well, we got to make sure they, they got to have their gun. 
And if we to give our condolence and prayer for, for the victims that they get shot and killed. But if you're advocating, not trying to find some kind of way to address the real problem of violence and gun violence, then you need to understand that you're not doing nothing. You, 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 you're adding to the problem. You're not trying to resolve the problem. You say you need this, but you don't show any love. You don't show any mercy. You show any grace. Those things need to be also of a, of, of a believer. Sure, you can have your Second Amendment. Sure, you should have your guns. And I guess you need to, sure, you should have your AR-15, a weapon of war, not a weapon of sports, not a weapon of defense, but a weapon of offense. And you say, that's what you would But you know, hey, you go with your bad self. Second Amendment, give them those guns, all right? As a matter of fact, maybe we should make guns free for everybody, right? Just get everybody, all every household have AR-15s and everything else. Let's just put them all up there. Oh, you're talking about, well, not the criminals. Well, let, hey, uh, let's focus on getting all the people guns if you think that's going to solve the problem. But the key to it is love. What are the fruits that you're bearing? Because you can have an AR-15, but are you bearing fruit? Are you talking about hating somebody because they're a Democrat? Or you say, well, Democrats are not Christians, and that's not true. And, and then you say, Republicans are not Christians, that's not true. You say, Independents are not Christians, that's not true. Anyone who professed himself, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, to whosoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So whether a person is a Democrat or Republican, but they are believer in Christ, you're supposed to show love to that person. And see, some of the teaching that we have, some of these political games we have, is indicating to know we, we're not gonna love them. We're gonna call them a demon. That's that whatever, what party they may be in, somebody gonna say, well, they're a demon, you know? So I'm gonna treat them, and here's the bad thing about it. Whether they're a demon or not, you don't act like a demon toward those people. You love those people because Christ loved and came to save who? The ungodly, right? Did he not? Christ came to save the ungodly. Christ did not use the weapons or the issues and the anger of, 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 of ungodliness to, to pull and hurt and maim other, maim other people. And, and, and that's what I want to talk about today because I think it's important. I remember when they talked about the slave trade, it was talking about Pope Nicholas uh, the V uh, and then some of the other popes too that wrote edicts or, or letters from the Pope or Papa or from Rome saying it's okay to enslave people that were not believers in Christ and to put them in perpetual slavery. And, and, and I guess that means to go ahead and rape them, because that's what happened. Uh, murder them, that's what happened. Uh, steal their property, that's what happened. Uh, on acts of un, all kinds of cruelty. And said what well, it was legal, and, the, the, and the, the, the church endorsed it. And so that's what the point is. You're not accountable. And maybe ministry need to put that out, because I guess, I think that's the issue. You need to put out and recognize you, you, you who's listening to me, that who's claimed profess to be a believer. What do you believe in? And let's say, what do you believe in in Christianity, or you believe in Islam and being a a submit to God, right? Submitting to God, or what are you Hebrews people? <laughs> what are you Jews or or Jewish people or or anybody that profess that they are serving to God? need to understand you're accountable to God. And if you're accountable to God, then you should recognize that regardless of the permission given by your flesh, by a ministry, by a politician, by a nation or country to do things that is contrary to the word of God, you as an individual will be held accountable to God, all of us. You know, the Bible said in Hebrews 9, 27, I believe that's the, the, the verse, but it says that there's a point in time for every man to die then judgment. Every last one of us. See, no, there, will no be, there will be no politician that's going to advocate 
for you the day you be your creator. There will be no advocator from the ministry about you. You're not, they're not going to speak on your behalf because most are going to be worried about speaking on their own behalf uh, concerning the answers for the things that they do wrong that we all have done. You know, the Bible says we're all sin and come short of the glory of God. So you're going to have to hell to be accountable for those things if you die in those things. And if by you practicing uh, this division and saying, well, I got permission to be mean. I got permission to be evil. You're going to find out that God has another answer for you. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fact that as we move forward in, in 2023, let's move forward in, from this point until the day you meet the Lord or the day the Lord returns, I want to make sure, and there's nobody, nobody going to be able to question this. You are accountable to who? Who are you accountable to? You're accountable to God. Let's call it, let's call it for what it is. You are accountable. I am accountable to God. Regardless of some, my flesh told me to go hate somebody, hurt somebody, do bad things to somebody, discriminate against somebody. I still got to answer to God in the end. You still got to answer to God. If you're teaching your children to hate, you're going to answer to that. If you're teaching your children to discriminate, you're going to answer to that. If you're teaching generations and generations to, to be in conflict and division instead of loving one another, because the, the scripture said, I think it's very clear, right? John 13, 34, he said to love one another. He didn't say love Republicans. He didn't say love Democrats. He didn't say love independents. He didn't say love Americans. He just said love one another. And, and that's, that's what we'll do. And even the other scripture said, love thy neighbor, right? If you go back to the Old Testament, say, he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. So that's the point is, you're going to be held accountable for the love. And listen to me. You will be held accountable for the love that you show to your neighbor. You will be held accountable for the love that you show to your fellow man. You will be held accountable to the love that you have for your brother. See, Cain didn't show love for his brother that he killed him. And, and, and if you look at the history and the atrocities and the, even the current teaching that people have of teaching your children how to hate, you hating somebody. You hating somebody not because you never even met, but because of the color of skin you hate them. You hate somebody because the fact is that you fearing something of losing something and saying i will disobey god's will god's plan because it does not meet my flesh requirements my political party requirements my ministry requirement my mama's requirement my daddy's requirement but you gotta understand they're gonna be held accountable look <clears throat> political people people in political parties each individual will be held accountable to God. Every family member will be held accountable unto God. That's what we want to talk about today. And, and ride with me because I think we need to move forward to understand this regardless of what you get approval by man. And you hear me that because there's some people sit there and say, well, I, I don't like that message. You don't like the message and you take it to him and ask him, Lord, is it okay for me to hate? Is it okay for me to do bad things to people that don't line up to your doctrine, to your will? And they're gonna sit there and say, the people, you know, it's funny, the people gonna sit there and say, you mean God's doctrine, God's will is for you to be mean, evil, ugly to me? Then they're gonna sit there and say, what God are you serving? Because there's the one scripture said there's a God of this world, and then there's God, the Father, the Creator. Which one are you serving? Which one are you presenting to God, to to yourself, to man, to your fellow man? And most of most of the city, ah, I, I can get over because I got the right to hate somebody. I got the right to do wrong. Well, this teaching subject here I put up here, it says, teaching the gospel Yeshua's way. That means Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus, just in case you didn't know that. So we want to teach the teaching, we want to teach the way he taught. 
the way he, do, and we do that by his word. The word tells us how he taught, right? So look at that. Every one, every one of us should give account of himself to God. That's the scripture. That's found in Romans 14, 12. Every one of us shall, not might, shall give account of himself to God. Meaning, you're going to be held accountable for your actions, for your hate, for your, 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 your nastiness and everything else. You will be held accountable for it. If you don't know that, <laughs> you you missing the boat. We all will be held accountable to God. So that's the topic today. And I, I really want to drive this one home. This is probably the most important message that any of you, any of us, myself included, should hear and understand that we're all accountable individually unto God. And you will be judged by a righteous God, not a political party. You know, God is not a <laughs> Democrat. God is not a Republican. So when, he, when you go before him, you're not going because of your party affiliation, your party philosophies, you're not. <laughs> you go before him based on the word of God. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to, to move forward in life knowing that you are, you will be, I will be held accountable to God? A lot of us want to be held accountable to our fellow man or, or to our ministry or our political party or our, our affiliations of different groups. Instead of saying none of those groups, and I, I hope you agree with me, you're not going to be held accountable. Your Republican Party, your Democrat Party, your independent believe party, your family, your ministry, you're not going to, they're not going to, you're not accountable to them, but you're accountable to God. Period. I, do we all agree with that? You are all, we are all accountable to God. So watch what's coming out of your mouth. Watch what actions you're taking. If you have hate, if you have unforgiveness, you are accountable to God. What does his word say about unforgiveness? What does his word say about murder? Those type of things we need to look at. So as we go forward, let's focus on knowing that we are all accountable unto God. If we can just sit that and believe that and trust that, we can make a difference in your life and the people you come in contact with, that I am accountable to God. So that, that's what I would like to focus on. Let's go forward. And, and, and look at this. Even when we talk about, we always try to do the Lord's Prayer as part of our message in the beginning, is notice you're, you are accountable to Him. It says that, Christ gave the message in Matthew 6, starting in verse 9. After, after this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we know that we're talking about the creator of heaven and earth. Uh, whether people, uh, those who don't believe that us, or don't believe in God, that's, that's a different story. But the thing is that we're accountable unto God. We're not accountable to anybody else. And, but if you do the will of God, you do what's on paper, what's written, you'll get along with your fellow man. And that's that's the key to it. Uh, and that's how I want to sit there and focus on it. Hey, Brother Addison, how you doing? Doing great. How are you? All right. Welcome to, you, you spring forward. We both spring forward. And uh, I sat there and said, well, I'm going to spring to 9 o'clock. <laughs> I'm going to spring. <laughs> uh, I was, I'm, I'm up in Hopewell now anyway. Virginia uh, came and uh, helped. My sister went on vacation. So I, I called myself going to help uh, take care of my mother. Uh, so I'm up here. She, she's, she, we already had some good praise time in the morning. <laughs> uh, and uh, they're going to come. I guess my sister coming later. They do the bathing and all that stuff yeah. with her. But I did, I cooked the breakfast and, and uh, 
toast and cereal and all that good stuff and gave her medicine, weight and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, we'll move forward. But I got an important message. I think the most important message that we need to be able to do and share today. And let me go back for a second. Uh, this is, I, 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 I alluded to it with you yes, last week, a week for last. And what, what I want to make sure as we looked at the church history, you know, from the Crusades, Spanish Inquisition, slave trade, Jim Crow laws, up to modern day, and the behavior of some of the people, because it really gets me sometimes when I look at the civil rights movement and the, 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 the brave students that try to integrate into predominantly white schools or universities. And you had these vicious, angry people. And those people, those people, you got to you, I agree, you, you probably do. You, those people were very brave to face all that ugliness. You know what I mean? To go into a school and they had to get the National Guard just to get a student into a school. And those, yeah. those people that were just, you, you, we saw those pictures and they're angry. And, and I guarantee you, I, I can always be 99% sure that a lot of those people were what we call label Christians. And that means that either they don't really want to be Christians or they don't know what they're doing. And, and the, the key to it is for the ministry, the five, four ministry gifts, because obviously they part of it too, should be able to teach people the word of God, which we agree on, and understand that here's the, here's the focus of the day for all of us. Brother Addison is accountable to God. He is held accountable to God. All right? And look, and here's my topic. I'm going to show it to you. And that's what I move forward. Because if we get people to start taking the mentality of way of thinking, is that brother, pastor, politician, family member in the long run i am accountable to god i will have to answer my actions to god just like they will as well you know we always talk about the fact as the advocate christ is our advocate christ is is the only advocate that we can afford to have when we actually do the things of god right i mean when you go before god that's the only advocate you have uh Hey, Mom, one second. Let me get that door. One second, bro. So anyway, what I'm saying is that the I don't think I don't think a lot of us I don't I don't think it's been pushed that way to who you're accountable to. You know what I mean? Because the people tell you to go hurt somebody, tell you to 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 kill somebody. The mob mentality, right? If you're mob mentality, you act as if you're clear to do what you want to do and not answer to God. And I, I think you see what I'm saying. I think that's not an emphasis in most people's lives of who they're accountable to. That scripture right there came from Romans, that statement, even itself, it came from Romans 4, 12. And you know, it's throughout the Bible, remember here's the Ten Commandments, I give them Ten Commandments, right? Uh -huh. I give them New Commandments, right? Who we're accountable to those account, those uh, commandments. So Romans 14 says, every one of us shall not, you know, just like those thou shall not do this. <laughs> this scripture right here says, shall give account of himself to God. Now, 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 now that's understood. And you, you agree with that because that was the word, right? You agree with the word. Mm -hmm. So anybody else is listening to us, we're trying to tell you, you are accountable to God. You have to give an account to God. If, if you don't know that, you don't understand that, you need to understand it today. If this is probably both, anybody else, if, forward this message to somebody else 
every last one of us are accountable unto God. You're not going to go before him and you're not going to be able to pull your political party. And you're not going to be able to pull your pastor. You're not going to pull Brother Addison. He's not going to advocate for you. Can you tell us, Brother, are you going to advocate for anybody uh, before God? I may, Maybe you, I, 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 I will not. <laughs> go ahead. Well, <laughs> you had uh, the rich man and the poor man. <laughs> poor man was advocating. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, did you ever notice that was that uh, the Lazarus didn't say nothing? Yeah. The rich man was the one asking for Lazarus. Yeah. And, and Lazarus, uh, Mo Abraham said, "Hey, there's a gulf, there's a chasm." There's a, there's, there's, a, there's a gap between you and us uh -huh. that we, he, I think I, I think he put a we there, neither we can't go to you and you can't come to us. So, so, and then I like the fact he said is, remember in Lazarus' lifetime, he was tormented and you were comforted as a rich man. But now Lazarus is comforted and you are tormented. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.